Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the red devil in fairy tale. Part 1. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. The saying of live life to the fullest was a hypocritical one. Yes, it means to not hold back and have no regrets, but it also holds you down. Say for example, one wanted to be the Hokage, he didn't want regrets, so he became it. And suddenly, instead of living, the entire world was weighing him down, having to constantly fix a broken world. That's why Naruto Uzumaki, hero of the fourth shinobi war, container of the great demon fox QB, and self-proclaimed baddest was now nothing but a hermit. Walking around and doing what looked like absolutely nothing with his life. In his opinion, he hasn't lived at all as a ninja of Konoha or the hero the entire elemental nation needed. Everywhere he went as a child was clouded by other influences, the constant watch of his grandfather Hiruzen, the third Hokage, kept him sheltered and immature. And his entire ninja career was dictated by things like become Hokage. Or bring Sasuke back. Or even the now dead make Sakura fall in love with me. He never truly realized how free his time with Yurei was, walking around with a person who cared for him, learning how to become a true man. He only wished he didn't take it for granted that he savored every minute he had with that old pervert. Because before he knew it, he was gone, along with any form of childhood innocence Naruto Uzumaki had left. He was a man in the middle of a world being torn inside out, people who couldn't understand, armies fighting pointless battles. He went from idiot in orange to a hero of war. A symbol of hope and freedom, an epitome of power. And with his entire teenage life centered around Akatsuki, he never had a chance to live. And after the war. He was trained in becoming the Hokage, then actually became the Hokage. A so-called dream come true. He achieved everything he ever wanted, he lived life to the fullest. It was years later that he realized he hadn't lived at all. So the seventh Hokage of the Leaf, the peacemaker as so many called him. Gave the office down to Konohamaru and walked away from everything. Everyone searched for him, but nobody would find him. Because he was out trying to live and he didn't want anybody to stop that. Hey asshole. Come back. Waka yelled. His morning was now ruined by some guy who ruined his precious work. His art. He left it outside his house to dry quickly, having to deliver it to a noble the next day, and some person just walked up and kicked dust into it as he passed. The figure kept walking, so Waka chased after. He got up behind the hooded man and grabbed his shoulder, look man. He said as the figure stopped, you messed up my stuff. The man turned around and pulled at his hood, Waka had his vision filled by the vivid red of the man's hair. He barely managed to tear his eyes off the head to look into his face, smooth with strange marks on his cheeks, with very unique violet eyes. What? The man asked with a smooth voice, his eyes analyzing even the littlest crevices in Waka's soul. Waka gulped, you are messed up my painting. The man looked over behind Waka to the painting, he pursed his lips at the speckles of dirt on the bottom third of the picture, my apologies. He said, if you want my opinion I think it looks better like that. He reached into a pouch on his hip and pulled out a bag, but here you go. He gave Waka the bag. Waka opened the bag in confusion, before stopping cold, what? But the amount of money in this. The man put his hand on Waka's shoulder, tell me son, what is your name? Waka looked at the taller man a bit dangerously, son. We look around the same age. The young artist claimed, the man chuckled and muttered an apology. Waka. The artist said, my name is Waka. Naruto. The man replied, only to make Waka raise his eyebrow. Naruto. He asked, after the old war hero. Old. Naruto said confused, the war wasn't that long ago. The 70 years, not that long for you. Because my grandfather who fought in it definitely doesn't jump around like he used to. If that's the case then yes. Naruto said unconvincingly, before he noticed the look Waka was giving him, actually I was named after a character in a book. Since I am the Yuzumaki Naruto you know of. Waka snorted, you look 20, not someone in his 80s. Naruto shrugged, I age well. Well I know for a fact that Yuzumaki Naruto wasn't a tomato head like you. He was blonde. If my mom is beautiful and I look like her, that makes me handsome right? And you've got really pretty hair, I bet that would've looked good on me too. Naruto laughed softly, it's camouflage so nobody recognizes me, he said quietly, you know my mom used to hate her red hair. I don't know why, it's beautiful. He looked off into the distance, well kid I have to go. Thanks for the chat. Without looking back Naruto walked away. Yuzumaki Naruto my ass. Waka muttered, I could smell the sake on that freak. He didn't believe a single word you said. Naruto shrugged, it doesn't matter. It's tough to believe I'm the great hero. He could hear Kurama, the QB, snort in his mind great my tails. You know. Naruto started quietly after a few minutes of silence, maybe we should go back and see the toads, see how Gamakichi is handling things over there. 
The young Toad had became the chief of the Toad clan about a decade earlier, the party was absolutely wild from what the Reed remembered. There is nothing better to do. We've seen all the shit this place has to offer, and nobody uses Chakra anymore to fight. That's because the need for Chakra has ended. Who is there to fight? Each other. Because unless there is a civil war it's not happening with the elemental nations being one country. You did good job. Karama referred to his previous appointment as Hokage a very good job. Naruto cited how long ago that was, and to think Konohimaru actually dissolved the shinobi system, that villages has no need to be hidden anymore. You sound like you don't like that. A little tired of peace, eh? Naruto rolled his eyes, you can read my thoughts, you know it's just my ninja side speaking. He suddenly looked thoughtful, maybe we should visit the city of Leaf, the girls were really nice before we left. Karama chuckled channeling the inner pervert you godfather so gratefully bestowed onto you. Naruto smirked, I like to say that me and Iro Senin are educated entrepreneurs of the female gender that enjoys all the advantages a fine female has to offer. Right Karama said dryly. You know what? Let's go to the Naruto suddenly doubled over, what? He said weakly as he felt something just on him. Get into Biju mode, Karama yelled. Everything felt dizzy, huh? Naruto moaned as the world started to spin in circles. Biju mode. The fox roared. Naruto felt the warmth of Karama's chakra as he entered Biju mode, before his world was engulfed in blackness. Naruto groaned as he rubbed his head, his consciousness finally returning. He rubbed his tired violet eyes before sitting up. He was in black. Purple. The entire room he was in was pitch black, not black as in darkness and o light to see, but the color black. A deep black that seemed to go for miles, just looking down, looked like he was floating in space, but with not a single star to give hope. Beauty Queen is awake huh, he looked up to see, Karama. The fox was physically there, this isn't your mind. Karama said, answering his unsung question. Naruto shakily got to his feet, what are you doing? The fox was holding something, a purple circle of some kind. Naruto could tell the fox was trying to hide his strain, and he could see the hole slowly closing by micrometers. Hey Naruto. Karama said a bit too gently you know Kamui. Naruto nodded, you know I do. Kakashi and Abito's technique was one of the most craziest things ever. Kamui is dimensional travel. Naruto caught the gist, whoa whoa. Nobody uses chakra anymore. There is no way someone can even have a Kamui to send us to another dimension. We weren't sent from our world. Someone is pulling us from theirs. What? Karama gritted his sharp teeth as the purple circle closed even more, look, we can't go back. We are in basically interdimensional limbo. Once this portal closes this place disappears along with us. Then let's go. We can go to this new place. A new adventure. Maybe the fights we've been missing. I'm sorry. Karama said suddenly. Huh? Karama's arms trembled under strain if I let this thing go it will close in an instant. The minute I held this while you were sleeping it was over for me. Naruto felt his blood chill, no. No 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 no. Please no. He felt tears prick his eyes, you serious? He asked sadly. Boy. Karama roared my host does not cry. We are stronger than that. For 86 years you have been the bitch of some prophecy or issue. Now you shall live free. Go away and live life as Naruto Uzumaki. Not the hero or Hokage. Naruto wiped his tears and nodded. Look kid. For almost nine decades I have been with you. And I have never loved a person as much as you. You are my brother. I may have hated you once. But I shall never let harm befall my kin. The fox murked I must keep my underling safe. Underlings Naruto snorted, you giant, arrogant, bastard of a fucking fox. You are the biggest asshole in the world. He trembled, and I love it. You fucking fantastic giant bastard fox the greatest friend I will ever have ever. Karama felt his arms give way, his tails now holding the portal Naruto I want you to live. Try to find happiness that this world couldn't give to you. I'll give you my chakra, go blow some shit up for me alright. He slowly raised his fist towards the boy. Naruto shakily bumped fists with him. Their emotions and thoughts being conveyed to each other. Just like their first time doing it both of them shared a little laugh at each other's thoughts. Naruto looked at his best friend longingly, before closing his eyes and jumping into the purple hole. Oh crap that is not what I meant to happen. Naruto stirred at the voice, he could feel his body go to work to fix the burns and broken burns it sustained. And the fresh feel of the air as his numb body slowly regained feeling. He sighed as he realized he was alive. The ride was not smooth, and his body had been pushed to its limits. Are you alright? A male voice asked. Naruto wanted nothing more than to just ignore the man and go to sleep, but he fraught the laziness bestowed upon him by Kakashi and sat up, looking at the man in front of him. He reminded Naruto a bit like both Sasuke and Sai at the same time. He had black hair that had a single strand falling to his nose, revealing dark black eyes. His face was handsome and he stood with not confidence, but power. 
He had on robes with a white towel-like thing tied around his waist, a pretty circular necklace wrapped around his neck. His expression is what reminded the Yuzumaki of his old teammates. Uncaring, serious pained. The look of someone who has lived through dark times, someone who has felt pain. Naruto gave the man a small wave, hello there. He said with mock joviality, by any chance were you the one who did whatever you just did to me. The man swallowed and nodded, yes he started slowly. I am the one who pulled you from wherever you came from, though I promise you it is an accident. I did not mean for a person to be dragged through here. And what did you mean to be dragged? Naruto asked. I was looking to pull something out of the dimension of Adolas into here. I think I might have used too much power. Naruto nodded and hopped onto his feet, I think you used a lot more power, because I have no idea what Adolas is. Naruto looked around, every tree and piece of life in the surrounding area was dead. And no doubt it was the man who caused it. Definitely too much power. Oh. The man seemed shocked, I I just looked for the strongest power source I didn't know it would pull a person from another dimension into Earthland. So this place is called Earthland then? Naruto asked, which he got a nod to, well cool. He chuckled at the man's dumbfounded expression, my name is Naruto. Yuzumaki Naruto. I'm from a place called the Elemental Nations. He extended his hand and hoped that handshakes were used here. The man took his hand and shook, my name is Zaref, it's a pleasure to meet you Naruto. Naruto looked at the drink in front of him. He hasn't seen much. But at least a pub is still a pub no matter where you are. Unfortunately it seemed like Seik wasn't as popular in Earthland, not that he couldn't drink other stuff. He just liked how smooth Seik felt down his throat, unlike the hard alcohol Zaref ordered him. Apparently they rode in different languages. They spoke the same language, but rode in another one. Naruto didn't even try to comprehend how that worked so just told the bartender to give him whatever Zaref had. He downed the drink, before taking a moment to think over the taste, good choice you have a taste in drink. Zaref asked him to not say his name in public, Naruto guessed he was probably a criminal or a killer. But he honestly didn't care, he was done being a hero, not that he was going to be a villain. He just wanted to be a simple, unbothered shade of grey. Zaref took a slow sip of his drink, I don't drink often. He said quietly. Naruto stared at his drink as it was refilled, well you will soon with me around. He had picked up quite the taste for alcohol during his years traveling, he personally blamed both Jiraiya and Tsunade for that. Zaref looked at him, and why would you be around me? He was given a dry look, you dragged me into this unknown dimension. I am now your responsibility. Besides, he shrugged, you look like you have no friends, I know what it likes to be alone. It was tough before he became a ninja, when he didn't even have Karama to be with him. And who says I want company? Naruto smiled slightly, you're not saying it. But I'm feeling it, it's a trick I have from my land. Zaref sighed and stared at the liquid in his cup, I am dangerous. He turned and felt a little nervous at the smirk on Naruto's face. Oh man the redeed said, just wait till you see me dangerous doesn't even begin to describe it. At him. Janera hand shouted to his men. Today is the day the black wizard Zara finally dies. His men roared in agreement as they rushed the dark-haired man. Zaref took a few seconds to comprehend the sudden appearance of the royal army. He felt his black magic spike and his control start to falter, but before he could lose control and kill everything in a half-mile radius a hand was placed on his shoulder. Zaref took a deep breath and nodded to the cloaked figure behind him, who jumped off seconds later. The black wizard growled at the men approaching him, death predation. His eyes glowed red for a moment as wave of dark magic lunged from his body, sending a large group of attacking soldiers flying back. They were dead before they hit the ground. Zara frowned at the bodies around him. He was honestly trying to tone it down enough so at least some of them would have lived. He looked up to see the army falter a moment at such a large amount killed. Honestly, if they wanted to kill him, at least try it with magic. 500 idiots with swords rushing at a more ranged magician was stupid. Especially with how strong he was. Pan rose his sword, do not falter. Do not give him an advantage. Fight. Fight for the people of Earthland he felt someone tap his shoulders and quickly turned around. He was met by a grinning redeed, you know I knew a man named Han once ago, he looked up to the sky wistfully, never got to know him, but we were Biju buddies. He looked back into the general's eyes, I'm getting distracted, aren't I? Who are you? Han cried. Naruto's eyes suddenly turned a blood red, his left eye becoming a shuriken that started to spin, leave. He commanded. It's pointless. He jumped away afterwards. Han blinked and turned around, retreat. Out surprise attack is ruined. Retreat. The men took no time and turning around and bounding away from the black wizard. Zaref smirked as Naruto appeared next to him. What was that? Han has never retreated ever. Naruto had a look of discomfort as he rubbed his eyes, oh god I hate how using the Sharingan feels it so wrong. Most likely because he was part of the Senju side of the big prophecy. His body was with the sage's physical, not the mental. So the Sharingan. 
Zara said, you have a lot of tricks I haven't discovered yet, and it's been 10 years. Naruto shrugged, I hate using it, but it has its advantages. He looked around with his now violet eyes, taking in the world regularly. What I used is called Kodomats A screw it, the name is too long. Basically mind control, but it takes a long time to recharge. Zaref looked at Naruto, a bit of emotion showing on his face, you serious? He asked in disbelief, mind control. He received a smug nod from the Reed. So Zaref started, what if you have been hypnotizing me for the last decade? Mentally forcing me to be your friend. So you admit it. We're friends. Naruto yelled in triumph, face at Z. You can't win this argument anymore. Zaref sighed, oh why do I have to be stuck with the only other immortal person on the planet? He asked in false sadness, oh wait. You're not from this planet. I just happened to fish the one immortal guy out of millions of dimensions. You enjoy the company. The black wizard shrugged, maybe we should lay low for a while, no doubt you're going to be wanted now since we left people alive this time. Naruto nodded, we should. Also good job on the restraint, you almost kept those people alive. Zaref looked down in sadness, still killed them though. You're trying. The thought is what counts, next time they'll all be knocked out. Thanks. Zaref told his only friend, thank you. The Red Devil. Real name unknown. Male. Age looks to be in his early twenties, might be older as cases with Zaref. Looks his defining feature is his hair that is a very bright shade of red. His eyes are violet and he has three marks on each of his cheeks. His height is estimated 5'10 to 6'0. A lean build. Magic he has shown superhuman speed and strength. Along with what seems like teleportation. He mostly uses his fists from what eyewitness accounts has seen and possess advanced fighting styles and reflexes. Affiliations he has never been seen without Zara for the last decade. They are considered partners and only communicate with each other. If one is somewhere then the other is definitely around. Rank SS. Flee on sight. Ah Naruto said disappointed as he read his wanted report, I'm not an SSS like you, he had hidden his powers very well since he had arrived at Earthland. He knew he only got the rank because of his affiliation with Zaref. Does it matter? Zaref asked. I mean, you're the only SS class wizard and I'm the only SSS class. You know, Naruto suddenly said, back in my home, the elemental nations, my dad was the first person to receive the SS rank. Along with the orders of flee on sight. I don't know why I'm complaining. Because you're a bum. Naruto shrugged, you aren't completely wrong. Two hundred years later. You have no idea how good it is to finally have a drink again. You're an alcoholic. Naruto shrugged at Zaref's words, it was true. He was an alcoholic. He didn't think it was bad, he just enjoyed drinking. And when you had to drink so much liquor to actually get drunk, as was the case with Naruto's healing factor, you pick up some need for drinks. They had just spent a few years traveling the land of Desierto. Which did not have much in the terms of good food and drink at all, so when they finally came back, Naruto decided to indulge himself in all the specialties Fiori had to offer. Well at least all the specialties Harjin Town had to offer. We should come back here. Naruto said, I've enjoyed myself. You enjoyed the woman. Zara said dryly. I honestly wish I could castrate your godfather for making you like this. I don't think I can handle your perverted tendencies for any longer. I'm sure many people have tried to do that to Iro Seno. Naruto bumped into a girl and knocked her down. Zara stopped and waited as Naruto helped the girl up. Sorry about that. Naruto said sheepishly, I didn't mean to knock you over. It's alright. The girl said cheerfully, accidents happen. Naruto nodded gratefully, thanks for forgiving me. He walked over to Zaref and they started to leave Harjin. One thing that practically nobody knew about the most deadly mage of all time was that he enjoyed baths very much. He liked baths just as much as Naruto liked alcohol or ramen. It was a special ritual for him, it calmed the raging emotions that has killed so many innocent lives. So while Zaref was having his own little personal time, Naruto was a few kilometers away, sitting down in the midst of the forest outside of the town of Magnolia. He was currently puling in both nature chakra and ethernano, pure magic in the atmosphere, into his body. If Kurama was with him he could have helped shape the magic reserves being formed in his body, but the fox was gone. So Naruto had to do it himself, he got the idea about a hundred years ago and had been slowly forming and enlarging his own reservoir of magic. Of course there was no need to use it to launch fireballs or create trees, he could do it in a much more effective scale with chakra. But era. Naruto couldn't wait to learn that. He had his own bootleg version of flying using wind release, but it was rather violent and unpredictable. And the idea of using a lacrima to communicate with people no matter where they are. If only the fourth shinobi war had such inventions, maybe it wouldn't have been so deadly. He felt his power bolster as he entered sage mode, his body being linked with all the nature around him. He suddenly frowned as the large portion of the forest was robbed of its life. Zaref. 
he felt another presence approach his friend, a light, gentle, but refined power. He got up and started to make his way over to his friend, he didn't want him to accidentally kill anyone. He decided to not book his way all the way over there or use the invisible Horatian marker that was tattooed onto Zara's lower back, a very long story that wasn't inappropriate in any ways. Zara seemed calm enough from what he could sense, maybe whoever it was could help him be more. Naruto tried to find the word. Ah yes. Human. Whoever it is could help him be more human. Am I interrupting something Z? Naruto asked slyly as both Zaref and the girl he was talking to span around in shock, I didn't know you like them, he looked at the girl, trying to judge her age, young. Zaref glared at him, be quiet Naruto. It is not what you think. Naruto ignored that as he laughed at the blush on the girl's face. He suddenly appeared right in front of her, making her scream in shock. Naruto eyed her for a moment. She looked young, with a short height and small body. The girly pink dress didn't help either. Her eyes were a nice green that didn't have any pupils whatsoever, which didn't startle Naruto since he had many experiences with the hue gauze. Her blonde head had a feather piece on it that looked like little wings were covering above her ears. She looked cute. A young adorable cute. Hello. Naruto said pleasantly, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. And that over there is my bestie Zura. F. Ferris. Yup, my good pal Ferris. Luckily the girl was still a bit startled by him, so she didn't notice his blatant slip up. After looking at Zaref Naruto couldn't help but laugh at his own stupidity. Ferris was Zaref backwards. The girl swallowed and smiled at a Mavis. I am Mavis Vermilion. Mavis, Zaref interrupted, recognized my magic and has shown a pretty good hold on magical abilities. I was thinking that we should teach her and her friends some tricks. Slowly a shit-eating grin made its way onto Naruto's face, oh yes. I cannot believe you actually thought of that. He grabbed Mavis's hand and started to shake it, I'm not sure what you did, but my loner friend wants to branch out. Good job. One year later. Come on Precht. Those chains are shit. Naruto yelled to his student, Precht Divulg, who was currently trying to recreate his chakra chains using chain magic. Precht gritted his teeth as he shot out a flurry of chains towards the Redeed, who merely blasted them away with some wind chakra. Precht was talented in many forms of magic, but the minute he saw Naruto's chakra chains being used on a bear he was awestruck and has been working to create them from scratch, of course he was learning other forms of magic, but the chain magic took priority for him. You know what? Naruto said, I'm tired of your shitty chains, get ready. He rushed towards Precht, and before the younger man could react Naruto had punched him in the face, sending him flying. Zaref sighed as he heard Naruto's insane laugh as Precht slowly got up, sometimes I'm worried for the boy, being trained by the psychopath. He looked back down to the book in his hands he was was currently writing. Mavis nodded idly as she shakily stood on a small pond. Naruto had told her the basics of water walking and tasked her to find out how to do it. The past week had been full of splashes and fails, but it looked like she was getting used to it. Where are the other three? Zaref asked as he closed his book, tired with writing. I think they are oh. Mavis waved her arms around desperately to keep her balance, which she did, they are still sleeping, Naruto really gave it to them last night. Lazy buggers. Zaref muttered. Mavis hastily jumped off the pond and wiped a bead of sweat off her face, blame Naruto not them. He's an animal during a fight. Right as she said that Precht went flying overhead and into a tree, he fell to the ground knocked out. The shame. Naruto said as he walked up to the duo, he almost got a good hit on me. You're really hard on him. Mavis noted as he eyed her unconscious friend. Naruto shrugged, he wanted to be stronger, his fault. He cracked his knuckles, anyways little pixie. You should get ready. Mavis had a look of fear in her eyes, I I don't know what I did. But it was Yuri I swear. You're not in trouble. Zaref chuckled, me and Naruto decided that you are the one. The one? Naruto placed a hand on his friend's shoulder, me and Ferris created three very special and powerful spells together. We have decided that you are the one who will inherit them. Mavis's eyes widened, what? What are they? Zaref smiled, we call them the fairy spells. It is the end. Zaref said plainly. Excuse me? Zara asked confused. The end of what? Naruto answered her question, the end of us training you. The entire group's eyes widened at their teacher's proclamation. You can't. Precht yelled, we still have so much to learn. Naruto looked up into the sky, we taught you all you need to know. Now you must grow on your own. Without us to guide you. Why? Mavis asked distraught. As you probably found out a long time ago, mostly because of Naruto's stupidity. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his neck at Zara's words. I am the black wizard Zaref, and Naruto is the red devil. He took note that no one seemed surprised by the revelation. We appreciate it. Naruto said that you didn't freak out for so long after you found out our identities. Prek pursed his lips, how long did you know? That we knew who you were. Naruto smiled at his student, ever since you and Mavis went and actually looked at Zaref's books. 
He does write his name in big letters on the cover. The duo looked a bit embarrassed, it had been a year since they looked at the books. We don't care. Zara stated loudly, we don't care that you are criminals or that fear Zaref is apparently evil. You're not. We know that. Zaref smiled but ignored her, you have one last task from us. Consider it our final training exercise. He took nods of all the shaky nods the students gave him, go to Magnolia, take out the Guild Blue Skull, and find the Tenry Jade that has linked all of you together. Then try to find happiness, live together as a family. A guild. What about you? Mavis asked. Naruto looked at his friend, we shall go and try to fix some things. We may see you again, we may not. But please don't try to find us. It was a few weeks later, on a distant island somewhere, that Naruto came with news. Blue Skull had been defeated, and a new guild, Fairy Tail, had been built on its ashes. They did good. Zaref said as he read the paper, the front page having a picture of their old student smiling. Now it's your turn to change things. Naruto said. Zaref nodded stiffly, are you sure, that is the case? Yes. When I was learning to control my Biju abilities I had to confront my dark side. Everybody has one, but the strongest and most conflicted are separate from their dark emotions. I know it is the case with you. So you help me enter my mind, then what? Naruto looked into the sea, I cannot tell you what to do when you meet your dark emotions. You must find the answer yourself, just remember that it isn't another sentiment being inside of you it is you. Naruto really hoped Zaref would get the hint that he needed to accept his evil, not try to destroy it. I'm ready. Naruto placed a hand on Zaref's head, good luck. I believe in you. Mom please. No dad. I'm not a monster. I'm not. Zaref's eyes snapped open, red as blood. Shit. Naruto yelled, Zaref must not have understood, he must have tried to destroy it. Z. Calm down. Calm do. Zaref blasted Naruto with a concentrated blast of death magic, piercing him right in the upper right of his chest. The redeed fell to his knees as his body was slowly being destroyed by the black magic. The former Hokage lost his balance and fell into the raging sea. Zaref slowly opened his eyes, his head aching. Damn it that did not go well. He sat up, Naruto. He got no answer. Zaref stood up slowly and looked around the island they were on. The small outlet of land was completely dead, the few trees and nature a dark and black. Oh no, he looked around desperately, Naruto. Hey. His voice merely echoed in the sky, not a single ear to hear it. He stepped in a puddle and looked down, only for his eyes to widen. Blood. Zaref collapsed into his knees, oh no 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 no. Seconds later in a blast of power, the island didn't even exist anymore. Naruto groaned at the ache in his chest. His body becoming conscious to his pain. Well he said in slight discomfort, this does not feel very good. He slowly opened his eyes and looked around. He was in a white room, with a giant windowed wall with what looked like people on the other side of it, and a few chairs and tables around. He looked to his right to see himself hooked up to an IV drip. He slowly pulled the needles out of his wrists and sat up. He tried to stretch, but the pain in his chest stopped him. He started to channel his chakra into his torso and sighed in relief as it slowly started to heal. You're finally awake. A female voice said. Naruto turned to see a woman with long black hair and black eyes, she looked very attractive with white clothing that accentuated her bust and showed her legs. Naruto smiled slyly, well I'm Naruto, hello there miss. Altier. She said with a soft smile. Altier Milkovich. Well then Altier your smile makes my he clutched his chest and frowned surprisingly intact heart race. Altier smirked at him but kept her distance, please enough. I find it strange that I am flirting, well trying to flirt, with the red devil. Naruto chuckled, I'm not quite sure why I have that nickname, I don't think I've really killed anyone in Fiori. Crippled yes. Scarred yes. But killed. That was Zara's thing. Though your partner did. Naruto got up and attempted to walk over to her, but the wall opened up revealing multiple mages readying attacks. Naruto stopped walking and looked at Altier with his eyebrows raised. A simple precaution. Altier clarified. This room is covered by magic suppressing runes, you cannot use any magic, and neither can I, but these people around us are out of the radius. Just in case you try something. Naruto rolled his eyes. Who needs magic? Suddenly a giant wave of wind knocked all of the mages down except Altier. The woman stared in shock as Naruto walked up to her and extended a hand, please. You shall need a lot more to hold me down. Now let's sit. And tell the people on the other side of that one-way mirror behind me to come out. Altier regained her composure and took his hand, he walked them over to the few chairs and sat her down, before sitting on a chair across from her. He saw a pitcher of water and poured himself a cup, can you answer some of my questions? Altier nodded, of course. She said smoothly, but he could tell she was a bit unnerved by his show of power. So, I assume that you helped me heal, so I shall not destroy this place and escape. I shall welcome any hospitality you shall show me and try to repay the debt I owe you for saving me. 
Naruto took a sip of water and looked deeply into Ultir's eyes, through the reflection he noticed that his hair and eyes had returned to its original blonde and blue. I am a member of the Magic Council. You are currently in our safekeeping. I am sorry about the show of force, it was very stupid to do that to someone who has not shown hostility. Naruto shrugged, it does not matter, many people have shown me hostility before, and I understand the concern because of my relationship with Zeref. Speaking of Zeref, Altier's eyes sparkled at the mention of the Black Wizard. What exactly happened to him, you have been out for a very long time, long before I was born or even my grandmother was born. Naruto looked a, but startled by that fact, hmm, well, he tried to find the right words, Zeref is dead. He lied. During his death he lost control of his powers and I got in the way. My body must have shut down to prevent his death magic from destroying my insides. Altier made a subtle glance behind Naruto to where the one-way wall was, probably giving them some sort of signal. So the SS-class Red Devil and the Black Wizard did not fight. Speaking of Red Naruto said, in Altier's eyes he saw his hair turn red, and his eyes turn violet. He ran his hand through his hair, and my hair is rather long. Though I'm surprised it's not down to my waist or even longer. So you're a natural blonde? Altier asked. Naruto nodded, my practically yellow hair and absolutely beautiful blue eyes made me very recognizable. So I decided to take after my mother, who I think looked absolutely amazing. Deep red hair and beautiful violet eyes you father must have been lucky. She complimented. Scared shitless, Naruto chuckled, but lucky. He then finished his cup of water, so I have been out for a long time. There has to be a reason that the council would keep a practically dead man in such a nice room for such a long time. Why not kill the deadly criminal? Ultier shrugged, I wasn't part of the council that long ago. Obviously, Naruto cut her off, you are way too young and beautiful. Ultier rolled her eyes, but I can see why, you are very strong. And you are also the only friend of Zeref. As she spoke a blue-haired man walked into the room, he was dressed rather nicely, and his defining feature had to be the intricate red tattoo along his right eye. He carried a tray of food and a shirt in his hands. He sat down across from both Naruto and Altier and set the tray of food down, he then threw the shirt to Naruto, who only had pants on. Here. He said. I got tired of hiding on the other side of that wall, it doesn't matter when he could sense us anyways. Naruto this is Seagreen, a fellow council member. Altier introduced. Pleasure. Naruto said as he pulled the shirt over his head. Is that a guild stamp? Seagrain questioned as he eyed the red tattoo on Naruto's arm, even with the shirt some of the tattoo was still visible, for many years people have tried to find out what kind of guild it is. It not a guild. Naruto said as he picked up a sandwich and took a bit, if say he swallowed, it's a symbol of my old village's police force. Used for identification and all that. I never joined a guild ever, same with Zeref. He honestly forgot about his Anbu tattoo. That's perfect. Seagrain said as he watched Naruto eat another sandwich, we've been having this idea involving you that I'd like you to hear. And that is. Help the council. Altier said, we have some missions that are too indirect and unsavory for guilds. We've been wondering if you could help. Naruto nodded, some deadly missions that are most likely illegal and what guilds can't do because of laws. He shrugged, I guess I can do some of your dirty work, though make it difficult, I like a good challenge. Seagrain stood up, you may want to return to being blonde, I don't think the rest of the council wants the world to know the Red Devil is working with us. Naruto sighed as his hair and eyes returned to their normal colors, I like the red. Ah well. He stood up and took Seagrain's hand, tell the rest of your members that the yellow flash he smiled at the name, is willing to help until my debt is paid. One year later. That is quite the destruction fairy tale has caused. Seagrain noted as he sat at his desk and read a reported. Discharge them. Altier was sitting on a couch and was reading the newest issue of the Sorcerer magazine, it's not like it's the first time they've destroyed some O. A body suddenly fell in her lap, she frowned. Naruto, please stop. Naruto smirked as he sat in her lap, what? I like it here. He turned to Seagrain, oh yeah, that dark guild the gravity punks or something, are gone. Literally there was only one strong guy, who still didn't last long. He looked at Altier slyly, I bet you can last a lot longer. Altier sighed at Naruto's not-so-discreet flirting, it even borderline sexual harassment in her opinion. Of course her and Seagrain was chosen as his handlers, Naruto had actually specifically asked for her after looking at all the other council members. I have another mission. Seagrain said, before smirking, but you can take it later if you want a few days with Altier over there. He chuckled at the glare he was receiving. Naruto repositioned himself so he was leaning heavily on Altier's body, do want to go have some fun. He asked as he absently read the magazine she was holding. He sighed in faux sadness when she hastily shook her head, fine what's the mission? The decade one. Boo. Naruto said in excitement as he got up and walked over to the blue-haired man, let me see. 
See Grain looked at the paper, the island town of Magitok was once the epitome of takeover magic. He read, but a ritual gone wrong has and the entire population become controlled by demons. The navy has been trying to exterminate them for years, but with no avail. The containment of the island is failing, and there is a chance that the demons will escape any day now. Naruto looked thoughtful, can't they turn back? The effects are permanent. The souls of the users have been destroyed. Leaving the demons to control their bodies. That is very unpleasant. I know. So. Naruto started, you want me to go to a death trap of an island and kill all of its inhabitants. Yes. Naruto shrugged, all right. Thank you Naruto. The blonde nodded, I like you Seagrain. He looked over to the lone female, I really like you also Altier, if only you felt the same way. Stupid and horny? Altier asked. I'd rather not feel like that. Naruto laughed as he jumped out of the window. Naruto eyed the naval blockade as he walked over the ocean. His happy man are gone now that he was alone, it was business time. It was night time, so he highly doubted any navy soldiers would notice him. His black coat with orange flames at the bottom kept him rather incognito in the darkness. He crossed the blockade and started to walk towards the island. He could notice a slight red haze in the atmosphere around the island as he approached. He could feel the maliciousness in the air. How desperately he wasted to just prepare a Bijudama and destroy the entire island without trouble, but most of Kurama's chakra had been used to heal his body from Zeref's black magic. And making a bomb strong enough to kill the demons lurking would most likely make him pass out, then drown. Also he has always been a bit fascinated with takeover magic. So getting a good look at how it looks would be nice, despite the fact that he had to kill every single living person on the island. He took a large step to exit the water and step on the beach, it seemed nice and quiet on the island. And then a howl of pain from an animal rung through the air, and a malicious roar. Maybe it wasn't so nice after all. Naruto noticed the top of a temple a few kilometers in front of him, so he entered the forest separating them and started walking. After a few minutes he heard a buzzing noise, not a bee. Maybe a hundred bees. It was way too loud for it to be a regular insect. Naruto stopped walking and immediately jumped away to prevent a giant projectile from skewering him. He landed and looked up. What looked like it used to be a human flew around in the air above him. He could faintly make out a faint body of a human, but it was swelled and the legs were unnaturally black and skinny, with two silver stingers at the end. The skin color was a bright yellow, and two insect wings sprung from the creature's back. Its face had two giant red eyes and a frothing mouth, two antennas finished off the look. It was a bee-human hybrid. Absolutely disgusting. Hello? Naruto asked tentatively. The creature made a hissing buzzing noise and shot the stingers out of its legs. Naruto jumped aside and stared at it disgusted, that was a failed takeover. Naruto picked up a rock and threw it at the bee, it swerved out of the way and grew more stingers at its feet, firing it again. A rock wall rose to block it and when it lowered Naruto was gone. The bee hovered a bit closer to where Naruto was looking around. And it didn't notice Naruto appearing behind it, his eyes turning a sickening red. The Matarasu. He called quietly. Gaining a grin satisfaction at watching the abomination burn in black flames. He decided to leave it burning until even the ashes were gone. He deactivated the Sharingan and rubbed his eyes at the feeling it left. You know what? He said to himself, maybe I should watch out. He gulped and closed his eyes a few moments later the veins bulged and his eyes turned a pale white with a slight blue tint to it. God damn. He said as he rubbed the veins around his eyes, I don't even think I have vessels there. The Sharingan felt uncomfortable, but the Byakugan felt like someone was constantly rubbing the corners of his eyes with feathers, unbelievably strange. But it had its advantages as he walked through the forest, being able to see every creature eyeing him without them noticing. His was disgusted at the sights he was seeing. The humans' bodies were slowly morphing into the forms of the demons occupying them. Creating human monster hybrids that looked, in his own opinion, like the Juubi took a shit and Madara gave it life. He looked at the giant temple in front of him with morbid satisfaction, the giant stone structure had statues of many of the demons that must have taken control of the island. He looked at the, the giant staircase in front of him and slowly started to walk up. The malicious presence started to rise more and more as he got higher up in the pyramid-shaped temple. At the top was a rectangular room with multiples intricate designs on the wall. In the middle was a hole in the wall with all the drawings surrounding it, bowing and praising. Naruto stopped in the middle of the room. And suddenly turned around, his Rasengan tearing through a wolf demon. His eyes turned red as all the entryway to the room was surrounded by black flames, leaving only him and the demons inside alone. A group of what looked like hyena hybrids rushed towards him he jumped in the air, earth flow spears. Spikes jutted from the ground and impaled most of the hyenas, he fired a blast of air at the rest, sending them flying into the Amaterasu. He ducked underneath the jaw of a snake before his hands was encased in lighting, Raiki he felt a deep pain in his leg. 
Another snake had come from underground and was biting his leg. Channeling some sort of narcotic poisoning into him. He felt more slither around him and restrain him, will another victim. Naruto growled at the voice, it was evil and slimy, much like Orochimaru, who are you? He yelled. Out of the corner of the room the shadows started to gather together until it formed a humanoid being, I am the shadow demon my host has turned into darkness itself, I control this island. Then I have to kill you. Naruto stated plainly as he struggled with his binds. No you are perfect a perfect host shadow, as Naruto decided to call him, said. Poor Naruto was losing strength due to the poison, what? Shadow got closer to him, so powerful a perfect body for one of the demon kings. Demon kings. Shadow gave a malicious chuckle, every few years, the most powerful beings in the demon realm meet together, the snake started to move, making Naruto face the hole in the wall. And it shall possess you, and we together shall rule this world. That is some cliche stupid shit you Naruto so desperately felt like sleeping, generic piece of shit. The shadow grabbed his arm and raised it, have fun your soul shall be destroyed. He then shoved Naruto's arm into the hole, the blonde felt something clamp around his wrist, drawing blood the large magic going somewhere his blood froze. A demon realm he could sense it all the evil malicious beings, he could feel great powers rushing towards him. He felt something enter him. Naruto looked around, well this is familiar. He said as he examined the sower he was in. You're telling me. Naruto jumped at the familiar deep voice. Oh shit. Kurama. The fox item, yeah, I don't know what is happening. Kurama. Naruto yelled as he jumped onto the fox, you fuzzy little bastard. He yelled as he nuzzled into the fox's snout. Boy. The fox yelled as his tail wrapped around the blonde and ruthlessly threw him to the ground don't just jump on me like that. I'll eat you. You know you won't you vulpine asshole. The both of them locked eyes before erupting in laughter. Good to see you asshole. You to bitch. Um that makes sense. No. It doesn't. I am supposed to be possessed by a demon. Not you. Well, Kurama started, me and my siblings are half god, half demon, and have connections to the mortal world. We have the unique ability to go to all three realms. Well you never told me you could go dimension hopping. Naruto yelled accusingly. I can't you blonde bastard. There are many parts of the demon realm, but no alternate dimensions for it. I guess that when me and my siblings were having our annual beat the shit out of every demon we find meet up, which is a great family exercise, I must have been pulled over here, since you still have my chakra. Speaking about having my chakra Naruto glared at the fox, you died. Lost in dimensional limbo. Garama shrugged his fuzzy shoulders before I was completely wiped from existence, I managed to warp myself to the god realm, then I just spent some time with my father and my siblings. And before you know it, hundreds of years have passed, and I find myself back with the same goddamn blonde idiot as before. Why am I still blonde? Naruto yelled to himself, Kurama had way too many stupid blonde jokes for his liking. His hair morphed red and he stared at his reflection in the water below him, there you go. Sexy Uzumaki look. Kurama snorted and looked around I am not permanently here though. What? There is an energy holding me here. It feels like a part of you, actually, you have a pool of it by you chakra reserves. Oh. Naruto said in realization, this is takeover magic. It's when you let a spirit take over your body to help fight in this dimension, I was unwillingly subjugated to it by some asshole demon. Well when this magic is over, I go back to the spirit realm. So learn how to do it, so I can visit when I feel like it and go when things get boring. Things never get boring with me. I spent 86 years with you, things can get very boring. Better than Mido though, her entire life was making seals and banging Hashirama. Naruto frowned, I did not need to know that. Shadow laughed as the blonde's hair turned a startling red, it's working. Yes. Dark red chakra started to swirl around the Naruto as it rose him up off the ground, he was encased by a cocoon of dark energy before it shattered in a giant shock wave of energy. Yes. Shadow yelled as he saw nine tails swishing behind the blonde, Lord QB. It is an honor. I have freed you into the realm of humans. You can do whatever you please. You the dark ominous voice rang from Naruto's mouth are a cliche piece of shit. Shadow's eyes widened as a red orb of energy shredded through him and the demonic power of the QB destroyed his soul. The darkness started to rush away from his body until the only thing left was the dead, elderly body of the village leader. Naruto chuckled darkly it has been so long Kurama now I'm gonna blow some shit up like you said. The now redeed released a torrent of fire, melting the stone and burning the snakes into nothingness. The Amaterasu covering the entrance ways started to swirl around the fox figure until he released it. It went flying into the surrounding forests, setting it alight with black fire. Naruto hunched over on all fours and looked to the moon, he then let out an inhuman roar of the QB. They erupted from the top of the staircase, the pure force of the jump, causing the structural integrity of the temple to fall. The entire giant structure collapsed. 
His clawed arm tore through an ape demon like butter, leaving it in two pieces. He then swished his tails around heavily, the sea started to become more and more furious, and a hurricane started to spin form at the end of the island. The earth started to shake uncontrollable, making many demons fall from their hiding places. Naruto smirked as the typhoon destroyed behind him, come out my prey. He stood up on his two feet before clasping his hands together Mokuten. A matter ass of bloom. The power of the wood release raged as the trees started to violently trash around, before glowing, one by one, the trees caught were caught in black fire, as his combination of the two great powers of Senju and Ichiha started to mix. He could hear the cry of the demons as they burned, and his smirk only rose as wind started to tear around him. His entire body was propelled in the air by wind chakra he flipped for a few moments before facing downwards towards the island. He could barely see the navy blockade flee the area over the raging hurricane. He opened his mouth, a deep dark purple orb started to form in front of him. It grew larger and larger until it was larger than Naruto's own body, before it compressed down into a small orb. Naruto's red slitted eyes widened in glee Bijidama. In a great blast of light, everything was gone. Naruto slowly moaned in fatigue as he walked across the empty ocean, his entire magic supply gone. He may have went a bit overboard, but he blames Kurama for that. He wanted to show the fox a good time for their reunion. And much like any other party, there was the hangover to deal with. He would have felt bad that he gave into his more sadistic tendencies when he massacred every single demon in a way that would make Itachi throw up. But he didn't, because they were asshole demons and that shadow thing really pissed him off. He smiled as he saw land over the horizon. And slowly made towards the town on the other side of the water. Oh. Oh my goodness. A female voice yelled. Naruto rubbed his head as he looked at the person who knocked him over. Ow. That hurt. Sorry. A pink-haired man yelled to him, come one Lucy. Let's go. Shut up idiot. The now named Lucy yelled, before turning to Naruto and helping him up, are you alright mister? Naruto. He answered, staring intently at the symbol on Natsu's arm. And I'm fine. He could hear guards yelling in the distance, you should go, the guards are coming, and I guess you are the one who burned down the town. Lucy laughed sheepishly before running off with the pink-haired man. A few moments later a group of rune knights ran up to him, excuse me. The lead one asked, did you see a pink-haired man and a blonde girl come through here? The redeed pointed in the complete opposite direction that the two went, that way. The knights thanked him and ran off. Naruto smirked as he walked away, fairy tale Mavis's guild has sure become interesting. He looked back to the burning port, very interesting. Holy crap. Altier yelled in shock as Naruto appeared in her lap, it's been almost two weeks since the Magitok has been destroyed. What happened? Naruto tried to shrug as he laid his head on Altier's lap. A. Hey. Some shit went down, so I leveled the place. He sounded nonchalant as he pointed to a picture in the magazine he picked up, Harjun, I was there when it was destroyed. He even saw the guy who did it. Naruto. Seagrain said a bit seriously, what you did how? From what the navy had said the entire island was destroyed from a giant blast of energy, something to rival even Ethereum itself. So Altier said slowly, is the mission complete? Naruto nodded and yawned, it's over, though I could really use a place to sleep. Can I bunk with you Altier? The female promptly stood up, sending Naruto toppling to the floor. The former blonde grumbled as he rubbed his head. Hey see grain? The redeed asked. Yeah? I Naruto looked at him without a trace of his usually humor, I consider my debt to be paid. Seagrain stared shocked, I I see. Naruto stood up and took out a lacrima from his pocket, you and Altier are my friends though, so if you ever need help just call. He nodded. Naruto went to the window and winked at Altier, don't worry Alti. When you're cold and lonely in bed, just call me. I'll be there in a flash. Altier sighed, just go Naruto. He waved as he jumped through the window, destroying it, and vanished before he hit the ground. End. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.